Welcome to another tutorial. This time I'm going to talk about string objects. String objects was developed in Bob's Track Builder and it allows you to add a bunch of um, objects together all as one long string and then um, if you want to move those around you can select whatever nodes you like and just shuffle those around and all the objects um, swing along with it. So you can have different colors there um, sorry if I go back into adding. You can add using a variety of different means. I'm just um, dragging here and it follows. If I let go and start dragging again, it'll do another one. Um, if I wanted to do it as a curve, uh, you can do it as a curve. If you wanted it as a straight line, um, you can do that and have a zigzag. Now, if you start off as a straight line and you want to change that, you can go to your properties and just change the type there and it'll switch between the, the two different types that we've got there at the moment. You can rest nodes on the ground or you can um, also have them independent of the ground um, just like tracks can be. Um, the additional thing is uh, with the, the movement of these nodes is if I hold Y down you can move the node up. Now won't, don't the tyres raise up in the air? Um, well if we go to the pieces of this um, string object and, and this pattern here has a start and an end and a pattern in between. If we change this pattern we can add more pieces in there. Um, but going back to the the reason of the the why the objects don't come up with the node is that they've set to here um, to be lowered to the ground. There's five different options here now. In BTB there was only um, three I think. And um, so there's a couple of other options which are, are fairly useful. Um, one is lowered to the ground and tilted, so it'll tilt with the ground. Um, you may have objects that want to sit and um, be tilted on the ground and others you want to remain upright. Um, you've got object sits on the spline, so now it's following that node that's up in the air. Um, so um, you can see it's sort of staring up there, it doesn't quite make sense for tyres to be like that, but you could, you could potentially build a bridge out of um, this sort of thing, you could create pieces of a bridge, have a start and an end to a bridge and then have it piece together and um, create interesting designs. You can have it curved, so it curves through the air. Um, holding control will um, add more nodes in there, see. Um, if I put that up in the air as well, um, you can see it curving in a nice way there. Um, so you can create some interesting effects and there's some some quite um, uh, interesting combinations that you can use here and I'll show off a couple of these in a moment. Um, before I do I'll just, um, yeah, let's just grab this string object here. I did control A to select all. I'm going to hold shift and just move it over the other side here so it's a little bit cleaner. And if I hold the A key now and just click and drag um, it's going to align to the track so you can see that it's lined up here. I didn't do a very good job of spacing these nodes out um, so oops, apologies my mouse is playing up a bit and likes to do a number of clicks when I'm dragging around so I'll just drag this over here and press control because um, we want to show off something else is that um, these nodes are actually going to find the nearest track and then align with it um, actually if I just control A and then press A you can see here it's it's aligning these nodes are aligning to this as that's the nearest track and these ones are aligning here so you might need to manually come in here and, and line them up there if that's your intention um, so that's pretty good um, some other things we'll just go and have a look at um, let's see we've got walls that we can add so you might have these kind of structures when I add as a straight line. Um, so there's a few different types here and we'll, we'll add some more in there for you to select um, some railing. Um, so that's it's reasonable. Um, we can um, go back to the, the rumble strips and um, there's a few default ones there that you can, whoops, I should have um, clicked on that and clicked that there we go. Um, so we can add a rumble strip that will go 
around this corner. Um, just some of the, the settings that you may want to use with this. Um, so for rumble strips we might have wanted to make that curve to make it a little bit nicer around here. Um, I'm trying to find a place where it digs into the ground so I can expose one of the things you might need to do. Um, let's just run it up over here and see if it happens. There's an effect where um, sometimes the ground is, is poking through your, your object but I think um, I've got this all set up by default not to. Um, so let's just go and change this a little bit and we'll add in so a red one uh, there we go, the red ones are digging into the ground. I knew I saw it somewhere before. When you first add an object it takes some default settings. Um, so if we look at the differences between um, the saw uh, concrete and the saw red um, is if you look down here as I switch between them you see it's uh, curving with the spine spline and the object is lower to the ground here whereas the vertices are lower to the ground here so when I go and set this to be vertices lower to the ground we can find uh, that that's now no longer popping through the grass it actually for every single vertice it measures some um, how far it should have been off this part of the ground and um, raises and puts it there so it um, it doesn't jump through. You could um, have ground that's higher and pops up through the middle of this where there are no vertices um, so you may have to do some fine tuning on, on some parts of your track for that. Um, the other thing that we saw there was curve with spline so it's not obvious there. Let's do a, a, just another little one here and um, we'll create a, a new curved one just a very simple but very curvy one and you can see here uh, an extreme example that that's no longer rectangular um, if I were to turn that off you see they become all rectangles but the gaps open up so um, there's a, a lot of calculations going into to making those gaps disappear when we say curve width spline um, can stretch um, if you have multiple objects as we did before I'll just throw the red one back in and we'll just tell it to curve and lower the vertices now if did I leave that yeah I've said the white ones here can stretch the red ones can't um, so let's just um, delete that node press delete to delete the node and then you can see that effect a little bit more here when I squish it in to use up that available space and, and have that pattern um, the white ones can squish, the red ones can't. So as you expand this out, um, you can see that difference. Um, that's useful in some objects. Um, as I say, there, there's fairly minimal objects here at the moment, but we'll add more over time. And um, probably over the next few months, you'll see a, a little bit more content coming in than um, I've done in the past. Um, so without dwelling on that too much let's um, have a look at one of the other properties and let's use a wall and let's find some space around here just to you, you're probably best off um, for, for doing this is just playing around with it yourself and, and seeing the, what the options do but here we've got walls and um, the walls don't sit too well on that ground so you've got a, a few options you can um, you know, rotate the object so it sits down um, or you can lower the vertices to the ground and the vertices are, are going down different effect um, and, but you can see they're all sort of angled now on that hill um, so that could be useful if you, you had a, a concrete or brick wall or something like that and there's another one where um, the lower vertices are stretched to the ground and um, the ones up the top are not stretched to the ground now that um, will take a bit more explaining um, let me go to a less steep part of this hill uh, actually let's just drag that up here and have it a little bit less of a slope 
So, for the, for the base here, uh, the bottom of the object, all their vertices will be 100% dragged down to the ground. For the top of the object, it won't. So these are now remaining perfectly flat on top, but the bottom is sloping with the ground. Now if I turn that off for a moment and switch back to vertices lower to ground, you can see the top now slopes down with the ground, and the bottom doesn't. Um, maybe it would have been better to demonstrate with this one, but it's a little bit late now. Um, so going back here and just putting them down. Um, so if I were to, to switch that so that the vertices are lowered to the ground, and let's just swing it around so it's going downhill a bit more, um, you can see that the, the tops also have that angle going down. And if I switch that so that um, it's weighted, depending on whether the bottom are, you get the top nice and even, but the bottom still stick to the ground. Um, that's pretty much all I'll cover in this tutorial. Um, just tips for performance-wise is is probably not to have kilometres worth of, of um, string objects going around. You want to keep these string objects um, fairly fairly um, small in in terms of you know say 100 meters or so um, so if you're adding you know a, a set of tires um, sorry I should, uh, that that's how you select another one in place if you like um, if you're going to have um, long set of tires you probably just want to stick to say 100 meters or so something like that rather than having it stretch all over the the landscape. Um, not only will it be slow to calculate in RTV, um, but when you export it in game, it comes out as one big long object, and um, that's not good for performance. You want them in smaller chunks, and um, use the sorry, use the properties here for the level of detail in and out to have that um, render only when it becomes visible. And um, yeah, that's. Um, Pretty much all I'll cover for now. If there's any questions, post in the comments. I tend not to reply on YouTube comments, but um, hit the forums and um, I'll post other videos too of um, how you can do certain tricks and tips. Um, so, uh, yeah, thanks again for watching and um, I'll post some more videos soon.